Uh, if by the gun you mean this gun, the one that was fired twice, I disagree. So you shot the balloon and Miss Swift shot a rook. Is that really true? I can't see it any other way. The gun we discovered in the trash was fired twice. The number of gunshots don't add up. This is just... What an expression. Why don't the gunshots add up? It's simple. This gun is fake evidence, left behind by the real criminal. Fake evidence? Think about it. The criminal planted this for a reason. By finding the gun, we assume the assassin was in the audience. In order to make us believe that the gun was used by the assassin, the gun needed to appear as if it had been fired twice. I get it, because two shots were fired during the incident. However, we proved that the bullet that hit the balloon did not come from this gun. Therefore, I have my doubts as to whether this gun also took Rook's life. <laughs> Here it comes. You're packing some serious heat. Enough with this song and dance. You've come this far. Go ahead and say it. I won't just say it, I'll prove it. The one who really shot Rook is... You. Obviously. Horace Knightley, you murdered Rook. <laughs> you finally said it. Knightley, you couldn't have... The killer wasn't the only one who took advantage of the fake assassination plot. You intended to murder Rook and claim he was a victim of the assassination. Once the president had entered the security room and the door to the plane was closed, only the victim and Knightley would have been left in this room. At that moment, you fired a third bullet, directly at Rook. Objection. A third bullet? Ha! Only two gunshots were heard. The numbers don't match up. Objection. The plane's walls are soundproof. If the door was closed, the gunshot would not have been heard outside. But wasn't the president in the next room? That's true. The president may have heard the gunshot. Mr. President, did you hear a gunshot? I didn't hear any gunshots. But, weren't you watching this room through the security cameras? The cameras in this room aren't usually turned on. I turned on the power after I entered the security room. So you didn't turn on the power immediately after entering the room? No. Actually, I... What is it? He's not being clear. Mr. President, focus, this is vital! I was... that is... I... Please! I was hiding under the bed, covering my ears. What?! But you know the assassination was fake! It doesn't matter! I simply hate the sound of guns! A terrifying sound! I just can't help it! This is pretty crazy. The president faking his, uh, greatness is one thing, but this is another. That definitely ain't going in my article. Ahem. Nightly, you saw the president hiding under the bed. Furthermore, you could tell if the security cameras had been turned on by looking at the monitors. In that moment when the president wouldn't hear the gunshot or see the room, you had a chance to fire a third bullet at Rook. Knightley, did you really? You deceived me? You really think I killed that moron? That's cold, Mr. President. Have a little faith in me. The bodyguard who's risking his life to protect you. I want to believe you, I really do, but... I just don't get it. Why are you suspecting me alone? There's still the possibility that she's the killer. This gun is not the murder weapon. The number of missing bullets makes this clear. Maybe it was one short to begin with. Everything of that? What? Maybe it already fired a shot yesterday. Or the day before. And the second shot was fired today. The one that hit Rook. Well, isn't that just a perfect excuse? Excuse? The possibility exists. You can't deny that. He's right, I can't deny it completely. He just evidence. 
I've been so decisive that it makes my heart stop and my logic crumble. You got something like that? Grr! Probably not. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do anything? At this rate, Nicole, well, uh, maybe this is time for Little Thief? Maybe? Hopefully? I'd really like to do some Little Thiefing. Mr. Prosecutor, it's true, I did an awful thing for a scoop, but I never killed nobody! I can never do a thing like that! Decisive evidence. If I could prove the murder weapon was Knightley's gun. Proof it was his gun? Yeah, it'd be great if you had the bullet that hit the balloon. Can you examine it and see if the ballistic markings match my gun? We can find the bullet that took Rook's life. We can determine which gun fired the shot from the ballistic markings. Wait a second! Yeah! One of the cameras got taken out, right? Where was that? You've got no evidence? Then we're done talking. Objection! Hold it! What? You don't seriously have decisive evidence? Huh. Naturally. That's a big joke. Well, come on now, show us! What's this so-called evidence? The bullet that took Rook's life. That's the decisive evidence I need. This evidence? Do I have it? I don't have it. I... don't have it. Okay, okay, it's game over, man. However, it is somewhere in this room. What? The bullet that killed Rook pierced through his body. So where did the bullet go? Earlier you explained it like this. The bullet that took Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. That's right. It'd be dangerous if he hadn't worn that bulletproof vest. However, now that the fake assassination plan has come to light, we know the bullet in the bulletproof vest was prepared earlier. So then, where did the bullet go? Interesting. Very interesting. Do you have the answer? Do I have evidence that shows the location of the bullet killed Mr. Rook? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Good sir, yippee doo da day. In this room, there's one thing that clearly is missing. Something missing? You sure it's not your brain? I'd like you to look at the rack of security monitors. Ah! It seems you've noticed, Mr. President. Among these images of the plane's surroundings, only the feed from the right side of the plane is absent. That's what's missing. A single monitor. Yeah. Mr. President, there was originally a monitor here, wasn't there? Uh, that's right. Why is there a stuffed toy now? That must have been put there to hide the empty space where the monitor used to be. Why is the monitor missing and where did it go? Why? Undoubtedly because it was hit by the bullet. In order to make us think the bullet really hit the bulletproof vest. It'd be a problem if another bullet hole was discovered. So then, where'd the monitor go? Where? It should be hidden somewhere inside this plane. There hasn't been a chance to dispose of it outside since it was shot. Detective Gumshoe, search the plane! What that, sir? President Wang, you said extraterrestrial laws apply to this plane! I will allow it. There's no problem. I just want to know the truth of Brooke's death. Damn it! You think this is a joke? You're always like this. Rook this, Brooke that. Detective, we have his approval. Go ahead. Now you're just getting pitiful. Stairsworth! I found it, sir! Good work, Detective. Now let's extract the bullet from the monitor. Hmm. If I do this here, and then do that... Got it! Well, it's definitely stained with blood. I'm certain this is the bullet that killed Rook. Bloody bullet data jotted down in my organizer. This is the bullet that will crush your arguments. Decisive evidence that blows a hole in your logic. The 
ballistic markings on this bullet do not match the gun found in the audience area. Miss Swift will be cleared of suspicion. Ah! What's wrong? Can't got your tongue? Detective, we need to examine the ballistic markings. Send the gun and bullet to forensics. Roger. Should be able to find clear markings on the bullet, sir. Now then, let's listen to the forensic report. Reporting. First, the blood on this bullet matches the victim's blood. This bullet really did take Reich's life. Also, Horace Knightley's fingerprints were found on this gun. Knightley's fingerprints probably came from when he took all our evidence. The real issue is the ballistic markings. The markings don't match, and this swift will be cleared of suspicion. And the bullet's ballistic markings match this gun. What? They match? Dun 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 dun. Isn't it because they're the same type of gun, though? Or is that not enough? What? What? No way! There's no mistake. What was fired from this gun? What? <laughs> That's strange. Looks like I was right after all. Naturally. Did you really think you had me cornered? You misread the board. The one who's been cornered is you. Alright, let's do this. If the mystic markings match the gun, there can be no doubt. The bullet that killed Rook was fired from the gun you found in the audience area. Who could have used the gun? Not me, because I was on stage. But what about the lady reporter in the audience? All the evidence points to that young lady is the assassin who killed Rook. Well, it's your move, Mr. Prosecutor. Where'd you find this gun again? And which gun fired the bullet? At least we know. It ain't me. Ah! This can't be happening. The President and I have admitted to the fake assassination plot. Now it's your turn to admit who the real criminal is. Doesn't it make Nicole the criminal? Don't get riled up, Kay. Let him have his say first. After he's done, it won't be too late to begin our counterattack. Alright, Mr. Edgeworth. Knightley's logic. Okay, so the main thing I'm curious about is, I remember in Apollo Justice, um, the, there was a big issue about, like, which gun fired the bullet. And the main reason is because if, if the guns are similar enough, then they'll have, then they'll both match the bullet. Uh, isn't that how ballistic markings work? Am I misremembering? Let's see here. Same model as the victims. Uh, that's... so... is that good enough? Let's see. Well, if they could have run fire from the gun you found in the audience area. Who could have used the gun? I was on stage, but what about that lady reporter in the audience area? All the evidence points to the young lady is the assassin who killed Rook. I don't recall that being proven. Well, what exactly have you proved? Oh yeah, you proved that I fired the first bullet. What? You're forgetting one crucial thing. Why were you called here in the first place? That's obvious, pal. We came to find the truth. Do you consider the worsening relationship with Zeng Fa to be the truth? No. Your purpose here was to solve the attempted assassination incident. My purpose here is for me to decide. It is not to be decided by the likes of you. Whatever. If you spend all day arguing like this, the case is going to go unsolved. Just give it up already. The real criminal is that lady over there. The real criminal can be none other than this man. The stick markings match the gun we discovered in the trash can. When did Knightley have the opportunity to touch the gun? It could only have been when I handed over the evidence. Dredgeworth, is there anything we can do? 
Using up until now has not been wrong. This is an obstacle we'll have to overcome. But doesn't he have decisive evidence? Testimony born from lies will always contain a contradiction. First, they'll need to press Nanny for more details. Okay, thought so, then let's keep pressing. No, that's... Objection. Didn't you say it earlier? This is the decisive evidence. Yeah. Well, how does it feel to have a whole world through your reasoning? Ballistic markings match the gun we found, so... Does that mean Nicole really was the shooter? I'd like to believe otherwise. But he's got the decisive evidence on his side, sir! Indeed. Once I proceed, if Miss Swift isn't the killer, then the ballistic markings should not match. Thoughts, K? Hmm. If the evidence is impossible, then maybe we should doubt the evidence itself, right? Doubt the evidence? Maybe he planted that bullet? And fired it from that gun? Yeah! He was on the plane, maybe that's not the real bullet. Nicole's definitely not a criminal. So if the evidence says that she's a criminal, there must be something wrong with it. You seem awfully sure of yourself. It's a great cease intuition. Intuition. Still, it's quite possible. Above all, Miss Swift doesn't seem like the type of person who tells such elaborate lies. Huh. In court, the evidence is everything. And yet here I am doubting it. Which evidence do I doubt? The bullets. Could there be something strange about the bullet? Detective, did you do anything to the bullet when you first discovered it? I don't know, like what, sir? I was thinking maybe he planted that bullet on purpose for us to find it. Like, and that was all part of his scheme. Like, step on it. Okay, so I guess I'm wrong. Alright. Preps fall on it. Terrible, sir. You're terrible, Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> My ears! Okay, so I'm wrong about that. I even Gumshoe could have bungled it that fast. Which evidence do I doubt? Uh, then I guess it's the gun? Um... But how would the markings match? He wouldn't have had time to plant the gun after he had already... He gave back the evidence! He gave me a different gun! That's it! If anything suspect here, it can only be the gun. The bullet was discovered just a moment ago. It couldn't have been tampered with yet. Did Knightley have a chance to tamper with the gun? Hand over all the evidence you've collected so far. And leave this plane at once. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, be a good boy and do as you're told. I kind of thought he planted the bullet there, but I guess it would be easier to swap guns, which means we have to check it, uh, the gun it's using now. I can't resist any longer. That's it! He could have tampered with the gun at that time. There's no doubt that this gun is the real murder weapon. In that case, the owner of this gun is... Nightly. He must have switched the guns. Without a doubt, this is Knightley's own gun. 